The video you are about to watch is provided by Sax Tanks, the crazy aquarium guy. <laughs> Welcome, fish lovers, to Sax Tanks, Great Aquarium Guy. No long intro this time. Right into it, because I know why you are here. You want to see my new Paca Pumper, when I acclimate him, how you acclimate him, and when he eats for the first time, right? So, let us just dive into it under a minute first, for once on my channel. Okay? Thanks for watching. I got the Faka Puffer. He's here. And he's actually twice as big as the first one. So I'm super happy about that. He looks healthy, but he's been through a lot. Where is he? You can't even see him because he's so small in the bag, you see? He's smaller than a pea popper. I told you that. That's why I can't keep, keep him with anything else. He needs his own tank. Usually, I've shown you a hundred times before, I don't take the aquarium water. I threw it to this and then put him in. But puffers can't be out of water. So this time we take this away. Pour him in. And think about that, usual, the tip, before you open the bag, it's perfect. But as soon as you open it, the ammonia raises the pH because it's been closed for such a long time. So when you open it, work fast. And then we're going to scoop it out and risk this water having in because it's the only way because they can't get netted out. Puffers need to be underwater constantly when you move them and I'm gonna do this anyway so even if they have something which I why would they if they keep 10,000 in the same if they were sick they would be lose a lot of money so they are probably more careful than I am but I'm gonna do this I'm gonna show you just a second how small it is but now the pH starts to rise very fast because the ammonia and the air starts running. So now I'm gently, I'm so happy about this. <laughs> I'm gently going to take a really small cup and hopefully get him up in there. Yes, we have him. And then small enough to go in here. It wasn't. Take it easy. Don't stress him out. Take off one lid. Come on, light. Don't mess with me now. This is even before making an intro, of course. This is just 20 minutes I since I picked him up from the store. He said, he's in now. I'm like, I'm there in 20 minutes. And then you do like this. Now I'm going to show you so we see him swim out. Then we do like this. A little bit first. Feel the temperature. Sorry. Now it's the same. It's worse if it's colder for a puffer. But mine was actually the same or a little bit warmer. And now he can swim out on his own. We can zoom out. We can zoom in a little bit. So we see how really small he is. Think about this. This is a 12 and a half gallon tank. So he's smaller than pea puffers. And he had Indian or pea puffers or whatever you want to call them. They have 20 names. In. So he, is, he actually is smaller than a pea puffer. For sure. No comparison. Now I'm with that lid again how it's only one way to do it okay like that so he's gonna lie on the bottom resting and he's been through a lot 
because I'm not sure exactly what where Petra Aqua is, but I think it's in Holland. So it's not such a bad trip. But I think they don't fly them out now because of Corona, so they do it by truck. So it's still maybe 36 hours in a bag. That's why it's so pale. And he won't eat now, so it's no use putting him food. Now it's just gonna get used to my water parameters. We have no idea what they have there. But mine is neutral. And that is the best for everything because neutral is not gonna push anything too hard. And if you watch my last video, I'm gonna explain 48 hour cycle. I can do it. But I don't recommend it. I recommend two weeks. But I can do it and I've been successful 15 out of 15 times. Even with 24 hours. But I don't recommend it. But when the fish is this small. And this uh, ceramic media is so established. And is enough for a 20 gallon. And this is a 12 and a half gallon and have two sponge filters, then I feel comfortable. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. Yeah, I can. Look. So this is how they look like. It's dark bottom, and it's yellow light, so it's not the colors he's gonna develop with red stripes and yellow. He's that small. I'm super happy right now because it doesn't have any burn fins and that happens when ammonia get in the bag so he looks more healthy than the first one that I got and he's twice the size because the first one that I got go back to that video it's in the community page like three posters ago he was hollow he was younger this is a strong one from the from the batch he was probably in you know if you raise 500 goldfish 50 of them are going to be twice the size within a month from 30 percent and then 30 percent is going to be super super small compared to the bigger ones so all the fish have different personalities when it comes to food and how they're built like the people with dna how strong they are from the beginning and no sunken belly, a little bit, but not too much. Already trying to eat pond snails. Really good sign. It's been seven minutes since we started the video. He's been in like three minutes. I put some pond snails in there because they are really soft. Apparently, I developed Malaysian trumpet snails, Colombian, uh, giant Colombian. Uh, Ram's horns, normal ram's horns, and pond snakes. So I'm really set up for being a puffer nerd, which I think I will be in my new apartment. Yes, he's eating pond snakes already. He is hungry. Should we try to feed him bloodworms? Or is it too soon? What do you guys think? I pause here because I need to I need to divide the bloodworms either way because even the cubes are bigger than him. And I don't like feeding bloodworms, but when they are this small, they need fat, they need protein. That's the only time I feed bloodworms when it's fry and it's a predator. Otherwise, I never feed bloodworms because it's like Big Mac, but this guy needs Big Mac. He has a long he has been on a long trip. Where is he? Zoom out again. I can't find him. There he is. Melting with ceramic. So I paused the video here. I bought krill, bloodworms, white mosquito larva, and another bloodworms. And that is just for the beginning. Then I'm going to go to shrimp, peel, 
Then I'm gonna go to shrimp with the shells on them, Atlantic shrimp. Then I'm gonna go over to trying small snails, uh, giant ramps of snails because they have hard shells. Or continue with the palm snails. Malaysians are super hard, so I don't think you can do it for a long time, at least two months. But what a beautiful fish. I, I think I need to take a photo after him afterwards so I have a good thumbnail, but we don't need to do that in a video. I'm actually gonna try to feed him because it seems like he's searching for food. And that is just pellets. Also something I'm gonna explain in the comments that I forgot in the last video when I set this up. That people use ammonia, but that is totally unnecessary because you can just put in flake food. Small amounts every day. And they will, because you don't have fish to eat it, they will rot and create ammonia. So don't go buy ammonia. It's too strong. It's too risky. So we pause the video here. I defrost. I don't defrost, but I cut up a small piece of blood worms to see if we will eat it. Okay? Second for you, couple of minutes for me. He's been going around the tank and looking around. That's a good sign. Because if he was really freaked out, he would lay still right where I put him. Now he looks like that because he's back again. But he's been all over the tank looking around. I think we need a close-up. He's so small. Can you see him? Yeah, yeah, now he's in picture. I've defrosted a cube of blood worms, but it's gonna be way too much for him. Why focus on the blood worms? Uh, everybody knows how it looks like. But the camera, is, the camera is supposed to be able to do that. That's what's bothering me. Whatever. As long as we film the puffer, right? So I'm gonna put in some and see if he likes it. We start with one with a little bit of water so he feels the smell. Because I don't want to put in blood worms just fouling the water. He feels the smell, I can see it. Remember I kept the puffer for over four years. Now he's just gotta see it. The eyes develop much better when he's Oh, when it's the size of this, the medicine box. You see how small the medicine box is? My hands are small for a male. So that is a tiny, tiny puffer. Come on, eat the blood worm. Make me happy. And I will start the treatment tomorrow. Today we'll just feed two times and leave him alone. Because even though it's mild, it's still medicine. And he looks healthy enough to not... Oh, we need it right away because he's gonna die. You see how small he is. He's struggling eating a bloodworm. But he likes them, so I'm gonna put in more so he have something to do. Because I want that belly thick. Not sunken in. And when they float around like that, this is probably way too much, but it's bare bottom, it's gonna find everything. You see, he's trying, he's eating. Would have smelled better if I didn't put regular water in with it to dilute the smell. But I had to because a full cube it's too big, it's that little, or that small, is the correct English, I think. But that is going to be the video of today, because it's going to be long enough when I make an intro, an outro. Even though he's so cute and we can watch him for hours. But I have another suggestion. I wanted to name this fish... Because males, now I'm talking about human, human males, when they have a rough, tough fish, they always assume it's a male. I did the same thing. 
Remember, I called my paka kingpin until she laid eggs. Then she become Miss Sunshine. So to honor her, I wanted to call her Miss Moonshine or just Moonshine. But then I remember Moonshine is like alcohol in uh, United States South parts. So it has to be Miss Moonshine to be beautiful. That is my suggestion, but spam the comment section. And the one uh, that's going to choose the name that I pick is going to get some kind of a prize. I, I, I just got the idea now, so I, don't, I can't think of the prize. Because if you live in India, we have to deal with that. If you live in uh, China, I mean, I don't know. But if I choose the name you suggest, you're going to get a prize. So spam the comment section. What is the new name for my new puffer? And we're not going to call her Miss Sunshine 2.0. Because that's just going to remind me of the horrible death of my first one. But Miss Moonshine, I thought was beautiful. And Moonshine would have been beautiful unless people made alcohol illegally in a bad way. So, Miss Moonshine is my suggestion. Do you agree with it? But I'd rather have a name that a subscriber picked, like last time. Miss Sunshine was not my idea. I had tons of ideas, but not Miss Sunshine. That was a girl named Lisa or Laura. Lisa, I think. You see my memory? That's pretty good. Four years ago. Three years ago. I think she's called Lisa Crowley. Sorry if I'm outing you now, but... She came up with the great name, Miss Sunshine. So spam the comment section with names for my new Fahaka Puffer. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm just going to sit down for a moment and relax and be happy. Because like I told you, this looked more healthy than the other one that I bought. And I, I had less experience and kept her with yellow labs. So she stayed in the corner. Now it's just by herself in a tank. I can totally control it every day. And I'm home every day. So let her work on her bloodworms and spam the comment section. And don't feel like this is not a good name because it's only Victoria or something. You can choose human names also. You can choose some from the book, from the Lord of the Rings, or everything. Just spam the comment section. I'm not gonna call her the Joker or something bad like that, but... You know what I mean. Help me with that. That would be a great idea, because I love when my subscribers... Uh, then we have 6,000 minds that are thinking of names instead of just mine. And then I've been calling her that and regret it later. When the personality doesn't fit or anything. So we end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm super happy with my tank. I'm super happy with my Fahaka. And I think she will do be doing great in here. And actually put in floating cryptocurrency and a floating uh, Valisnera Gigantia that I actually found. And I hope I could take off all the duckweed from it. Because I don't want duckweed in here. It's going to be impossible to remove. So, should we turn the camera again? We do that, Blue Style. Hello, fish lovers. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I would appreciate it more if I see 50 comments after this video with name suggestions. Nothing is off the table. Nothing. Not even Batman. And all, comment, all comments also helps the video to rush up.
feeding of a haka fr uh, bloodworms for the first time. Feeding of a haka fry bloodworms for the first time is probably gonna be the title. So spam the comment section, please. Everybody. Thank you, and hope if you don't have a good day, hope it gets better. And much love from the Crazy Aquarium guy.